Hi everyone! A while ago, I made a video called Druid Raid Healing Theory Crafting, an interesting idea to test out. And since then, I've been going hard leveling my druid. And just recently, I got to try my ideas out. And I'm happy to say, it actually worked out pretty damn good. Now, there is however a whole bunch of stuff to talk about, so I'm probably gonna make two videos about this thing. One regarding dungeon healing and one regarding raid healing, because they differ somewhat in my experience. In this video, I'll start off with general stuff and then move into more raid oriented healing. There is a lot to be said and many arguments to be accounted for, but stay tuned and I'll at least try to get through most of them. Let's start off by summarizing my idea again. So, since I love druids, and especially love rejuvenation, I got curious of just how efficient the spell was. I started off by looking into how effective rejuvenation potentially could be with the proper talents and gear, and it turned out it could be very, very mana efficient. In this graph we're looking at here, you can see the healing per mana efficiency for each rank of rejuvenation with 400 healing power. As you can see, it has quite an interesting curve. The highest value here is 7.4 healing per mana at rank 2. That is a very high efficiency. However, despite doing a lot of healing per mana, your potential healing output is not too great. It's 180 for rank 2, that's 180 healing per second. Rank 3, however, has a healing output of 280 healing per second. That's a pretty good number. Obviously, that's the optimal healing output during the perfect situations. However, it is also worth noting that when I dinged 60 on my druid, I was at 500 healing power rather than 400, meaning I could potentially dish out 324 healing per second. That's good. The healing efficiency for rank 3 is now at 7, that's with 500 healing power. Basically, this is good stuff. It could also be fun knowing that the potential healing output for rank 2, rank 2 rejuvenation that is, is now at 214 HPS, and the mana efficiency is at 8.7 healing per mana. Taking a look at how good healing touch does, which is considered to be the go-to heal for druids, we see that rank 3 rejuvenation is 27% more mana efficient than rank 3 healing touch. That's a pretty large difference. But wait just a minute. Sure that it's more mana efficient, but what about the actual healing outputs? Well, as a matter of fact, by using rejuvenation, we can dish out 23% more healing per second compared to what we could do with healing touch. Those are pretty compelling arguments. Not only do you heal more, you can heal for a longer time. Now, you may not have thought about this before, but there are only two classes with healing over time spells in the game, and two of those spells belong to the druid, that's rejuvenation and regrowth. Besides that, we have the priest Renew. And actually, Renew is even more mana efficient than Rejuvenation. Let's take a look at it as well. Taking the optimal priest talents for Renew, we end up with insane mana efficiency at rank 1. We're looking at values all the way up to 13.7 healing per mana. Now, just looking at these numbers, Priests are the de facto strongest healers when it comes to hot healing. These numbers are insane. But are priests really the strongest? It's time we get into the biggest problem with hot healing, and that is overhealing. See, normally when you're healing, you look for the targets with the lowest health and you heal them. The issue of doing that with hots, that is healing over time spells, is that the target is likely going to be topped off before the hot has done more than 1-2 ticks. This is probably also why the Renew's strongest strength, so to say I suppose, is also its biggest weakness. See, the reason as for why Renew gets these higher numbers than Rejuvenation is, well it's partly because priests have a talent that allow 20%, 25% of their spirits 
to work as healing power, but more importantly, renew is 3 seconds longer or 25% longer than a rejuvenation, so it takes one more time. See, what you're going to be doing differently when you're healing with hearts is that of instead of looking for the targets with the lowest health, you're going to be looking for the damaged targets that still has a decent amount of health. Often this tends to be targets around or above 85%. The reason for this is that the other healers are almost instinctively going to be healing the lowest targets and not care about the ones with the higher health until everyone below them has been fully healed. By applying your hearts to these targets, the likelihood of your hearts healing for the full duration without being overhealing is greatly increased. Another reason as for why you should go for targets with health above 85% or so is that few healers care about putting out spell ranks that heals for only 10-15% to of a target's health. Now because you're in a sense in a constant fight against other healers topping off your hearted targets, it truly helps having a healing over time spell with shorter duration. The longer your target stays hearted, the bigger the likelihood that your heart will be doing overhealing, because the other healers will have topped your target off. You've still paid mana for the full 15 seconds or 5 ticks of healing. If you only get 4 off instead of 5, you've instantly lowered both mana efficiency and healing output by 20%. That's a lot. So, in practicality, I think that's a word, despite the fact that Renew has higher potential numbers, the difference might not be that large actually. When talking about the duration of HOTS, it could be interesting to note the 8 piece set bonus of tier 2 for Druids, the Storm Rage set, which increases the duration of rejuvenation by 3 seconds effectively giving it 5 ticks instead of 4. But unlike Renew, you don't pay a higher mana cost for that extra tick, it's just completely free. So that's a pretty strong um, set bonus. Now you could of course argue that targets that are close to full health are not priority targets to heal and I obviously agree. However, any target not at max health should be topped off. It's not rare for players to survive fights with just a few percentage of their health left, and maybe being at 100% health instead of 87% health when taking that huge blow from a boss could be the difference between living or dying. Also, the dangerous damage in raids is often the unexpected huge blow from a boss or the likes of it. Most players are gonna be gone after taking two blows from a boss, well, besides the tank. The healing needed to save a player in such a situation is not direct healing, but rather instant healing, such as nature swiftness and a high rank healing touch. The way damage is thrown out in raids removes large part of the necessity to only focus on low health targets. Because they're either gonna die in 2 seconds, or they're gonna be staying alive for long enough to be healed by a heart instead. Now let's talk more general about the differences between direct heals and healing over time spells, and situation that favors one over the other. This is sadly or joyfully depending on whether you are part of team over time or team direct, um, not that simple. You see, direct healing spells are not the obvious winner here at all. They're surely not the loser, but it's... You know, they're probably... Um, let's just get into it. Okay, so, according to my way of reasoning, direct heals are useful in the following situations. Whenever your target will take a larger amount of damage directly in an expected way so that the spell can be pre-healed, or the melee blow. This includes abilities such as Onyxia's Flame Breath. If you time it perfectly, the tank will likely be at full health less than a second after the Fire Breath goes off. 
another situation. Whenever your tank is taking sudden large amounts of damage, and you know that there will be these sudden large amounts of damage. Now in these situations, you want to constantly be casting a heal, and depending on whether the tank has taken damage, you interrupt the cast shortly before it goes off, or you allow it to complete. Another situation, whenever you need to somewhat quickly get your target to max health so that a second attack won't get your target killed. However, these types of situations, I argue, are actually not that common besides for tanks. You see, in raids, there shouldn't be any mobs attacking healers or damage dealers. And if there are, after two attacks, the target is either dead, or the player I mean, or the tank should have taunted the mob away. Basically, this type of situation calls for an instant direct heal and not for a costed direct heal, and it's somewhat of an important distinction to make. Now, let's stay with this situation. The second reason as for why you want a direct heal is simply because the other healers are going to be using direct heals on the target here. It's not that your hot couldn't do the healing, it's that your target is gonna be topped off and your hot is gonna do overhealing. But if you were to split up the healing responsibility, maybe 5 targets per healer, you could just use your hots fine in this situation. Now I'd argue that a hot could be just as useful, if not even more useful in these types of situations, as a direct heal. Now let's go into situations where hots are more useful than direct heals. One of these situations is whenever a target is afflicted by a dot. A very easy solution is to counter that dot with a hot. Instead of having to wait for the dot to do sufficient damage for it to be worthwhile to do a direct heal, you could simply smack a hot on your friend. It's quick, it's easy, and it's mana efficient. Whenever tanks are taking stable damage over time, which they quite often do, throwing a hot works quite fine. And it's the only situation where hots are usually considered worthwhile, so it should definitely be worthwhile. Another situation is whenever you have several targets taking smaller amounts of damage. Like mentioned before, most healers don't care about keybinding ranks of spells that only do 500 healing. Rank 3 Rejuvenation, however, is a perfect dandy little spell to use here. Because it's so quick, it's so cheap and it's so effective. Another very good situation or example of a situation is in fights where you have to frequently move, such as in Suppression Room. Now as you know it's not possible to cast spells when moving, and also in Suppression Room the gas from the pillars I suppose increases the casting times of your spells by a lot. Whenever you're taking pushback, that's another situation where hots are very nice. Since hots are instantly casted, you obviously won't suffer from the pushback. Now in fights like Valistras, I take between 1 or 2 hits per casted chain heal on my shaman, increasing the effective casting time by 1 or 2 seconds, from 2.5 seconds to 3.5 or even 4.5. That's a quite large decrease in healing output. And Valistress is actually one of the best fights for HOTS in the game. As seen from the previous Excel sheets, Rejuvenation and Renew have a potential of dishing out between 900 and 1200 healing per second, respectively, supposing you have 500 healing power. And since the entire raid is taking predictable, periodic damage and you're gonna avoid pushback, a renew or rejuvenation is absolutely the way to go there. Now, any long fight as well, and the reason for this is that hots are more mana efficient than direct heals. You could be one of the few healers with mana left in a long fight as it's coming to its end, and I'm well aware that runes and potions exist, but sometimes you're still gonna go oom. Another good example of a situation where hots could be, hmm, let's say, 
more in favor than direct heals is if you're using the Dark Moon card Blue Dragon. Um, because there is a 2% chance of proccing it on successful costs, you want to dish out as many costs as possible, and spamming rank 3 rejuvenation allows you to do a hell of a lot of costs, so this might actually be the perfect playstyle for this trinket. Sadly, I don't have the Dark Moon card yet, however, I have the deck for it. So we're just waiting for the Dark Moon Fair to get back to town, and then I'm very much looking forward to trying that out. Alright, so we've been looking at some situations where, well, where direct healing is preferred and where healing over time is preferred, but it's time we get into one of the big weaknesses with healing over time spells. And that is that a target can only have one rejuvenation and one renew at them at a time. You can't have two rejuvenations on you. Now, if two druids cast rejuvenation on the same target, the rejuvenation that does the most healing will remove the other one. This, however, does not necessarily mean that the highest rank will always win. It could just be a larger difference in healing power that makes, say, rank 4 do more healing than rank 5, and then rank 4 will win over rank 5 anyway. But however, this might not be such a big issue after all. See, you can have a maximum of 8 rejuvenations on the raid at any time, and that means that when you apply your new rejuvenation, the let's say the 8 rejuvenation ago will be doing its final tick. Of course, you could increase this number if you grab the tier 2 Storm Rage 8 piece bonus. So, because you can only maintain 8 rejuvenations on a raid at any time, and there are 40 people in the raid, maybe you could beat 2 druids and just split up the raid. Who knows? But anyway, to make somewhat of a summary of what I've said so far, when it comes to actually healing with rejuvenation, just spam it out to as many targets with decent amount of health or more as possible. Make sure to avoid the absolutely lowest targets, uh, or at least don't use a hot on them. It's probably a better idea to use nature swiftness and a big healing touch on them. When it comes to gear, you're looking for healing power. And that's pretty much it, you're looking for healing power and then... Supposedly, depending on whether you have the Darkman card Blue Dragon, you would either want to go for spirits or intellect. As for talents, I'd recommend this build. I have been considering Deep Resto for Swiftmund, but since I don't use higher ranks of rejuvenation that often, it's probably worth more to go with a 9% mana reduction for rejuvenation. But feel free to try a Deep Resto rejuvenation build. I'd be curious to hear how it works out for you. To start to end this video off, I am happy to say that this healing style works out just fine and it even excels in some situations. Topping the healing done in Molten Core on certain fights, certain boss fights, as a level 59 druid, playing this unorthodox original build, um, that feels pretty good. So I hope you found this interesting. I sure enjoyed exploring this and I'm happy to say that it definitely works good. I see no real arguments against this style of healing. It is kinda hard to argue against anything that tops the meters. So like if you enjoyed and subscribe to not miss the dungeon healing part of this rejuvenation build. Cheers people!